Hey everybody! Welcome back to Northern Lion Plays the Binding of Isaac. We had a crazy marathon run in our last run. We're obviously going to restart with a different character this time, uh, because our random run didn't work out for us. I don't believe that affects our room generation in any- Okay, you know what? Just getting a little bit ridiculous here. I want to see the item room just to know. Alright, well we're not missing out that much, but that was relatively decent. Okay, here we go. Start random. Now, you're gonna hate me for this, but I'm also not gonna play as Samson. For the first time in like seven months, I actually recorded a full run as Samson, <laughs> are you kidding me? And scrapped it, uh, because it ended up being too short slash bad. Uh, so we're gonna random, there we go. It's not that I'm never gonna play as Samson again, it's just that Samson screwed me on the run that we played as. I got, like, the worst item rooms of all time with him. All active items that I didn't really want and, uh, well, I couldn't really use, I should say. And it created an enormous issue and ended up with just, uh, you know, a relatively quick descent into failure. But a little too slow to... Or a little too short, I should say, to really count as what I would consider acceptable for a full episode. Anyway, I'm much happier to be Kane. That's probably understandable. You know what Michael Jordan said? Look who we got our canes on now. You know what Michael Jordan said? You miss 100% of the spouses who go on vacation. That sounded... I, I meant that as like a heartfelt, sentimental thing. Not like he was using them for target practice or something. Now, second secret room, please. Oh, hey. Hey. Get down. Get down there. Get th There you go. Oh, that's kind of not close enough, I think, but hey, two of clubs, that'll give us a couple of bombs. We probably won't use that immediately. Uh, if we get an item room that has ten bombs in it, we would totally pick it up now. I know we could get some money out of it. I bet if we play our cards right on this floor, we could probably transition this two of clubs card into enough money to make it to the shop. I do believe that. It's gonna be a little tight and we'll have to be fairly creative to make it work, but I believe that it could happen. Especially if we get some more bombs in the process. Uh, we have an extra key, thankfully, so we get chocolate milk from our other item room. I know people are gonna be mad, but I'm not gonna take it. Chocolate milk makes my life a lot worse. Might make our run slightly better, but it makes my life a lot worse. So we're gonna leave it, even though I don't have a D6 and I can't re-roll it. It's never like... When I don't pick up chocolate milk or when I re-roll it, don't think of me re-rolling it because it's bad. Think of me re-rolling it because I don't want to end up having to wear, uh, you know, a professional bowler-style wrist brace every day past the age of 28. That's my thinking on that item. I don't think it's gonna change in Rebirth. I'll be happy to check it out a couple of times in Rebirth, you know, sacrifice my well-being ever so slightly just to, you know, make sure that I'm doing my due diligence there. But for now, chocolate milk, you know, that train has sailed. I used it for like two years. And it made me, I don't even like chocolate milk in real life, so I have no sentimental connection to the item. I know people are always like, you don't like chocolate milk, what's wrong with you? Well, I don't like milk. You'd be surprised how much that question comes up. You know, there's, there's a lot of people who don't like milk. I'm not super unusual in that regard. It's not like someone saying, like, I don't like pizza. What the hell is wrong with you, man? Unless you're on some kind of, like, you know, ketogenic diet or something like that. What do you got against pizza? You got a problem with pizza, you got a problem with me. No, but seriously. Lots of people don't like milk. That doesn't make me some kind of, you know, special character or something like that. But the number of times that I say, hey, I don't like milk, and they say, yeah? Well, check this shit out. I got a trump card in my back pocket. What about chocolate milk? And you're like, no. You know. You like black licorice? No. What about black jelly beans? What do you think? It's the same freaking flavor. Plus, we all know vanilla is the finest of the flavors. You see the show and then you know the vertigo, vertigo is gonna go because it's so dangerous. You have to sign a waiver. In any case. Feels like it's been about one week since we started this floor. I still have that spirit heart remaining from earlier though, and we got HP from our first boss, so I'm pretty excited. I mean, SME super fan is effectively worth two item rooms in and of itself, so I'm not feeling too bad about this chocolate milk, and our deal with the devil exists, and double cane starting HP allows us to very easily take a deal with the devil. You know, we just had an hour long run where I didn't get any super special items. Yes, I'm going to take Brimstone. Enjoy. Well, not enjoy, but like, sucks to your ass, Mar. I gotta look out for uh, number one here sometimes. Now, I am still, uh, Relishing the thought of this dream world where I managed to get into that shop and buy something. That feels really good. That solves one of our problems, getting that key. The principal problem for us now is going to be uh, getting enough money. And the way that I thought we would get enough money is by picking up a few bombs and then using those bombs to get that money on the uh, that one room that has like maybe 10 cents. Oh, that's going to help out a lot. 
Yeah, now we have eight bombs, so we could pretty easily do that. I think we only needed two to begin with, but, you know, this will give us eight, which is very solid. I think we'll try to get into that room as well, but the other way we could do it is maybe by going to the secret room, but we'll see if we need to. Alright, we, well, we could find the secret room doing this as well, so, two of clubs. Bomb down here and run. Good. And then this will give us, uh, five cents. No secret room, that's okay. And then a bomb down like here and run. I wanted to put it, like, far away from the door so I didn't hit it when I walked in. That takes us up to 18 cents, which definitely gives us a usable shop here. I don't think we could find the secret room even if it were directly below us, with the same bomb at least. So I'll just, yeah, one bomb for one penny is not a great trade, but here we are. And Book of Revelations. Why not at this point? Well, one reason why not is so we could get another key, but whatever. Book of Revelations is pretty free freaking sweet. I don't know what word I was trying to go with there. Um, as Kane, this will mitigate whatever damage problems we have. Also allow us to get more cubes of meat. Scales nicely or synergizes nicely with other spacebar items. And I'd say, you know, it's early on. It's very early on. But we're in a fantastic position and I would expect this run uh, to continue going well. So I hurt myself today to see if I still feel. I focus on the cane. Could this to earn be real? We're going to go to our boss trap room and find out if that is indeed the case. Uh, it would have been hilarious if I ended up getting myself killed there. Hey, here's something that's pretty sweet. We're Kane. What's the main benefit of Kane? Yeah, his incredible uh, starting luck foot. Sounds like he's a circus like sideshow character, but uh, yeah, the the luck foot is gonna be sweet as heck in helping us uh, figure out which one of these pills is amazing, if not all of them. And we have two of the white pills, so if this is like a tears or an HP upgrade, I am gonna be stoked. And this could end up being one of the most solid like first floors we've ever had, at least like top ten percentile. I guess it's technically first two floors, but you get the idea. And we got more bombs. All right, it's a tears upgrade, so we got two tears upgrades. If it's bombs or key, I don't really care. That's full health, and this last one, telepills. All right, well we learned. That is pretty good. So at least we got two tears upgrades, and uh, we know that there's a full health pill in our rotation. Dare I say we even should look for a uh, secret room here? There's a lot of plausible places for it, but to be able to have so much money going down to the third floor would be sweet. Ah, we could have bombed our way into the shop, actually. And here we picked up a staggering amount of money. Staggering might not be the right word, but hey. I'm actually going to go back to our shop, and just to be safe, because I would like to keep our money above 15 cents, but I imagine we'll get it to begin with anyway, like we'll get 2 cents on the next floor. I'll buy a key, at least this key will allow us to access the shop and maybe buy more keys. It's a fail-safe. So I would say that uh, this floor has turned out super well. I'm very, very impressed with the, the RNG that we got here, and hey, I'm very glad we didn't play as Samson, although maybe if we had Samson we'd already have like Mom's Knife Polyphemus or something. That's the beauty of Isaac, you never know. Alright, Catacombs 1. I am not afraid. So, Mom's Purse. I think we're, well, we don't have a reroll and we're early enough that I think it's worth getting Mom's Purse. There's a chance we can get a better trinket than Missing Page to go along with the Polaroid, and there we go. Uh, that worked out fantastically. If you build it, they will come. Libraries, uh, ooh, second secret room, really? Libraries on non-Isaac runs are like... Not something I'm necessarily super into, unless we actually want a book. But to be honest with you, I think we already have the best book that we would want here. Uh, book of Revelations will guarantee us the uh, cubes of meat. Which is why I'm going to go to one more room before we fight our boss here. Because I'd like to get a cube of meat on this floor to kind of give us a familiar that shoots instead of just having brimstone. Which makes us a little bit more vulnerable to the enemies that uh, rush us down. Like these flies, for example, that are going to be real annoying, but mostly taken care of now. We got a key out of it too, it feels pretty good. So we'll go to our item room. Um, razor blade, not very good. That's okay though. But yeah, we already have the best book from... Uh, it's either this or Book of Revelation, or sorry, Book of Belial that you would want. And uh, I think since we already have one, we won't be wasting any keys trying to look for the other one. You know what, why not just continue exploring? Because we're probably almost done with this floor anyway, right? I think it's worth doing because I, I really just want to get that extra penny, and I mean, we'll probably get it either way, but I'd rather not be forced to look for the secret room if that makes sense, like I'd rather just comfortably pick it up 
and, you know, have everyone be happy with the, the way that the situation presented itself. It's a very small floor. There's only uh, two secret room viable locations, I'd say. I may be mistaken, but I don't think I am, although I have been, you know, routinely in the past. I love fighting these enemies because normally they're super annoying, but with Brimstone and, like, zero knockback, at least until we get our next Meat Boy, they're really, really easy. So Demon Judgment I am going to play, but I'm going to wait until we uh, reach the point. Ooh, careful. Good, uh, we could bomb our way into the library anyway, but I'm going to wait until we reach the point where we've already seen whether or not we get a deal with the devil, because I don't know if Demon Judgments have the same rules as Blood Banks, where if you play them it doesn't count as red heart damage. I mean, you have to assume that they do. I mean, you don't have to, but I assume that they do. Uh, but... I may be mistaken in that. And I don't ho uh, I don't harbor, like, a lot of hope that we would end up getting a deal with the devil item out of it, but I do think there is a chance. We'll see. This should be Pestilence. Pestilence should be very easy for us. With uh, so little HP, it's going to be difficult for us to justify a deal with the devil. But hey, maybe we could take Brimstone and then transition into deals with the angel. Although I don't think you can do that. My deal with the angel meta is weak, but I, I think after you take a deal with the devil, you just can't get a deal with the angel. But I might be mistaken. That might be based on uh, false pretenses. Alright, well, we got a Spirit Heart. We'll take our second level cube of meats. Uh, second level meat. Boy, that's the point at which it becomes a uh, an entity that is, uh, you know, person personifiable. It's been a while since I was in 10th grade English class, you know, giving characters, uh, or human-like characters, characteristics, I should say, to a unhuman thing. I figured we'd buy the pill. Yeah? Alright, we could use a speed upgrade. As Kane, it seems like it's kind of a no-caner to just buy pills. If we know what they are, and they're good, even better, but... Is that really all the red hearts we had? This entire floor? Those are the only red hearts. Again, I didn't harbor a lot of hope about getting a deal with the devil item there. But at the same time, you know, that's kind of what you're there for. <laughs> I can say things like, oh, I don't really harbor a lot of hope of getting a deal with the devil, but I would still like to, if possible. Uh, well, you know, it's a little cost prohibitive, but for two bombs we can at least blow up this fortune teller and maybe get something out of it. Enough to play Demon Judgment some more? Nah, just some money. But we got our bomb back, and we don't have enough money to buy the uh, red heart from the shop, I think, so. Down to the next floor, still happy with this. Lots of spirit hearts back. Uh, we're protecting us, but I'm really hoping to get some HP on the next floor. I would uh, very much welcome that. We are in the rare situation where there is a small chance that we could actually make our libraries into double item rooms just by visiting them. Oh, we don't have enough money to spawn an arcade on this floor. Sucks a little bit, but that's okay. So that's another speed upgrade. I'll be uh, more than happy to take that. And we'll bomb here. Could find second secret room. Nope, but you gotta check. Alright. It's not very much money. Another speed upgrade. Uh, despite being not very much money, I am gonna go to our shop. Mostly for this exact reason. I wanna fight Super Greed so I can get money for the future floors, and hey, not having money is the floor- If you don't have money, that's the floor when you wanna fight Greed, is what I'm talking about. It's a difficult sentence for me to put together, apparently, despite having said it, like, 200 times, but, uh... If you don't have money, Greed is like the best shop outcome for you because he's going to give you money or an item that you don't deserve to have because you don't have money. We get a better trinket as well in the form of Mom's Pearl. I'm happy with that. If it works, uh, you know, the missing page we're unlikely to get any benefit out of at all. So to get maybe even one Spirit Heart out of Mom's Pearl is uh, a lot better. Mom's Pearl, Mom's Purse. Surprisingly difficult to parse those as well. So toothpicks in this version of Spider-Mod, and maybe all versions of Spider-Mod, but definitely this version of Spider-Mod, is a special item and does nothing. So we'll be ignoring that. And we've been ignoring a lot of our item rooms. And imagine how different this run would be if I had not taken Brimstone. That's what I'd like to... I'm not always right, but in situations where I firmly believe I am right, I like to be insufferable about it, I guess. It's a character flaw, what can I say? But if I hadn't taken Brimstone, maybe I take Guppy's head, or maybe I take nothing at all, and everything else had gone pretty much exactly the same as it's gone right now, we would be totally screwed. We're maybe a little bit overpowered right now, but I'll take that over. Hey, our next item rooms were like Razor Blade and Toothpicks, 
and, uh, you know, chocolate milk, and we haven't been able to get anything out of them. So I think, you know, you gotta take the... When the game gives you lemonade, you gotta say, hey, thanks for not making me uh, have to use lemons, you know? You, you process the lemons yourself, which is... makes things easier on me, doesn't it? Uh, I think I maybe should have used Book of Revelations a room earlier. Did I waste a little bit of a charge on it? If so, that's dumb. But hey, we got a dime on the ground, that's pretty sweet. Boss room is right here. Uh, this should be, like, our deal with the devil collection floor. So I'm really hoping that we pick up some HP. Or we get nine lives. But that puts us in a bit of a risky spot. So let's just hope that we get some HP. The second best outcome probably would have been, like, fighting the Fallen or something. But alas, here we are. And I, I can't be too salty about fighting Fistula. Fistula is pretty easy. Fighting Fistula was also my uh, high school football team. Alright, so there's our HP. Let's see if we can get, like, Marker packed in here. No, we're gonna fight Krampus, which is actually sweet. Because this is a plus two damage increase for us. So this is, like, the second best item we've had on this run. Now, for all of my complaining, don't let me get away that easily, alright? Because there are good items that we've picked up that I've kind of glossed over. First off, our tiers upgrades in the form of the pills. Those would have helped us out. Secondly, uh, Book of Revelations, that's helping us out. Thirdly, hey, scumbag, your first item room was SMB Superfan. So, you know, if you want to complain about not getting lucky with your item rooms, you know, those in gold houses shouldn't throw freaking hammers because gold's really malleable. I don't know. There was a joke in there somewhere. I, uh, I killed it. It's dead. I'm gonna look for the secret room because we have, eh, enough bombs to justify looking for that. I'm still not gonna go to our library. I know I said we're in the rare position where we might be able to make it work for us and become a double item room, but it's not worth the key. If we could bomb our way into it, I probably would have done it, but I don't think it's worth the key. All right. The depths, this is, uh, either an important floor or just a stop gap on the way to the womb, basically, because and, and it all hinges on, you know, the shop and the deal with the devil, basically. If we don't get a deal with the devil on this floor, and our shop ends up having, like, greed in it, and our item room kind of sucks, then who cares? This floor is just uh, an opportunity to build spirit hearts. But, if we get very, very lucky, and we get, like, all good things, then that's fantastic. Probably should have left. Maybe that wouldn't have found the second secret room if it existed there. But anyway. We got six cents for one bomb, which I think is a pretty good trade, even though we have a lot of money. We have a decent amount of bombs, too, so how can I be salty about that? Well, we're going to find out very quickly if we are on our, uh... Or if we're, uh, going to get a deal with the devil. We also should get war. And I think in this case, I will take third level Meat Boy. Maybe I won't. It kind of seems like... I mean, that's the thing, it's kind of a waste to take Book of Revelations and then not go all the way with Meat Boy. But at the same time, maybe that's just like, you know, that's like saying, well, if I buy the, if I buy the membership card, I should spend more money at the restaurant because I save money the more I spend. Like, you want to, you want to post-purchase rationalize the, the purchase of the membership card. I think we're content with Book of Revelations just giving us spirit hearts. And we'll treat Meat Boys after that second one as a bit of a penalty. So we're just going to be, we're going to say thank you. No, I don't want to put the extended warranty protection on my video game. What do you think? I live in a freaking treehouse or something? Like, my games, they if they get scratched, they'll just, you know, buy a, a used copy from you for $4 next year. It's okay. I don't mean any, uh, ooh, that, that's useful for the next floor. I don't mean any respect to people that work at, uh, EB Games, if EB Games still exists where you are, or uh, GameSpot, GameStop, sorry. Whose idea was that? Um, but, I know you gotta hustle, you know, you gotta get that, uh, those uh, power cards or whatever, the power-up cards in the Game Informer subscriptions, you gotta sell them, otherwise your boss is gonna be on your ass. At the same time, I'm gonna take this, by the way, but at the same time, some of the uh, most ridiculous kind of, like, salesmanship I've ever seen has, has been at GameStops and, uh, EB Games. I was buying, like, Dance Central 3 for my mom, because she was like, you know, they, they got a Kinect, because, you, you know, say what you will about the Kinect from, like, a hardcore gaming standpoint, but for a while, as a casual gamer, she was excited about it. She's like, oh, I can, you know, I don't need to learn this complicated controller, I can just play the game uh, myself, right? Like, with my hands. I know how to use my hands. Don't be gross about that, you guys. 
Uh, shop contains notched axe and a tears upgrade, I think, which is pretty sweet. So we'll live with that. Uh, and we don't need anything else, but we might as well buy it because we have cash, so. Um, but yeah, and I bought Dance Central 3, and it had just come out, so it was relatively new. And the guy was like, uh, well, do you want to put, like, the $4 guarantee on it so if anything happens to the disc, then, you know, we'll replace it for free. And I was like, nah, that's alright, man. Thanks, though. And he's like, are you sure? Like, things get pretty wild with these Kinect games. And the way I'm saying it makes it sound like he was, like, making a joke. But he wasn't. He was like, you never know what's going to happen with these Kinect games. Like, we have them coming in all the time like this. And I'm like, dude, who do you, first off, who do you think you're talking to? Not like, oh, I'm some big shot guy, but more like, come on. Do I look like a Navy SEAL or something like that? I'm not, you know, do I look like I have, like, Mr. Fantastic? I have, like, stretchy arms or something like that? This is not going to happen. Secondly, like, do you think that your customers are idiots? There has been one time in my entire life where I have, uh, physically knocked my console. Uh, I'm, I'll just use Book of Revelations here because we're not getting a meet on the next level anyway. Uh, there's been one time where I have physically knocked my console over while playing a game. Uh, and it was not me. It was my friend who was an idiot. And it was because there was a controller plugged in. It wasn't because that we were playing Connect and, oh, make sure you jump, and, oh, you know, we accidentally caused a freaking fault line to break, and now our Connect fell down, and, oh, no, Dan Central broke. Also, I think Grandma might be dead. No, it was, you know, we were playing Guitar Hero, and we were also probably not able to drive according to the legal limits of sobriety, which we weren't driving. We were at home playing Rock Band, which is your Guitar Hero, which is what you should be doing in a situation like that. But anyway... Um, he just like pulled on the guitar and then the Xbox 360 fell over and you know scratched the disc That's the only time it's ever happened to me. I can't believe how many libraries we had here. So you don't need to, to, to try to lie to me and say like oh shit gets crazy with these connect games, you know I was like 23 if I was an eight-year-old child, maybe I could understand it It's not like I'm gonna rage at the game be like oh I tried to dance to Gangnam style But I did bad and then you just punch the console. There's no risk of that happening literally anyway that's that's my long story short. The the stores on Earth that I'm most uncomfortable going to are GameStops and EB Games as a result of the high pressure sales tactic. Then again, I uh, you know I've never purchased real estate. I have uh, I have never uh, bought a car, so I've never been to a car dealership. And I do to be fair to everybody. I get uncomfortable when I like go shopping for clothes and then you know a friendly salesperson comes over and says hey can I help you and I'm like wow way too pushy this is why people buy stuff online I'm trying to say you know that I maybe uh, have a lower tolerance for salesmanship than, than a lot of people I think it's also maybe because you know I uh, I'm gonna take the speed upgrade again uh, I read when I was in college because you know a lot of college students go through this but uh, I read Dale Carnegie's how to win friends and influence people which I don't necessarily have bad things to say about but I will say that makes me really wary about people who use your name in conversation when they're salesmen you go into a store and then you know it's a freaking like I don't know American Eagle or something like that and they're like hey bud what's your name and you're like Ryan and they're like cool Ryan what kind of pants can I put you in today first off don't phrase it like that secondly we don't need to know one another's names I respect you as a human being I'm not trying to dehumanize you but we don't need to know each other's names okay I'm buying pants I am pants buyer number 91 for that day Slot me as that in your book. Because then later they go, like, you know, you're in the change room. I guess we'll take this speed upgrade too. Let's get real freaking crazy. Um, you know, you're in the changing room and they say, Hey, Ryan, you know, how those corduroys hugging you, buddy? And I'm like, dude, we're not friends. And maybe in another life we could be, but it's not going to happen today. It's, a, it, you know, it's a pushy sales tactic to make you think that you have, like, a rapport with them. And then they're like... Hey man, you know, just looking out for you. Do you want to get this like $3 pants guarantee in case they get scratched while you're playing Dance Central? And then you say, yeah, because you, your primitive, you know, prehistoric brain thinks that this guy is going to help you defend yourself against saber tooth tigers or something like that. It doesn't realize that we're in the modern world where people are just trying to sell you, you know, freaking uh, boot cuts or something like that. Anyway, what the heck am I even talking about? Free packed in the curse room. I'm excited about that. Again, no disrespect men if you work at... Uh, GameStop or EB Games, but then to be fair, the most harsh criticism I've heard of corporate policy at those companies comes from people who were employees or are currently employed. So, 
maybe I don't feel so bad about that. But in any case, this run is shaping up pretty nicely. I, uh, starting to get skeptical that there's a way to lose this one. I've been wrong before. I'm not worried too much about the IV bag at this point. Mostly because I almost don't want a speed upgrade. If that were the small rock, I'd be super excited. But we'll, we'll try to get it, but if we don't get it, we're not going to gamble too much to work for it. But anyway, that's that. I will say, though, I think there's a little... Uh, there's a little nugget of truth in that, you know, pushy salesmen and women, salespeople, are, uh, you know, pushing people to buy stuff online. Like, I am so happy of the era that... I, I thought we'd been there, but we didn't go there. Okay, this is fine. Uh, I'm so happy that we're in the era of, like, day one digital sales. Of course that comes with its own host of problems, like, you know, impulse purchases have never been easier. Like, if you want to buy something, that's like, preloads are great, but they're also kind of sneaky, right? It's like, hey... If you pre-order our game, you can't play it until day one, but you can like have it on your system right now. And you're like, it's like the best form of pre-ordering, right? Until, you know, maybe reviews come out and it gets fives across the board and you're like, ah, oh, shit. Well, okay. But I am, I prefer that to the alternative of actually having to talk to other human beings, which I realize is on me more than it's on other human beings. But at the same time, I, I much prefer it. You know, no more waiting in line. For, uh, you know, six hours at 8 a.m. to buy Halo 2. This is, like, pre-midnight launch, at least in my city, but... Um, instead, you know, hey, it's midnight. Halo 2 is being downloaded. Obviously, this is a long time in the past. But anyway, you get the idea. I, I'm interested to know, though, because I know there are people that, uh, that are interested in the collecting aspect of, of games, and they want to have the, the discs and the, the boxes and the manuals. And I feel for those people because, like, standard game purchases a bit, or not game purchases, but standard game uh, payouts, should we say, like um, pack ins, that's what I'm going for, have been, like, sorely lacking unless you buy collector's editions or you're, you know, buying from a developer like CD Projekt Red that actually, like, cares about stuff like that. They've been sorely lacking for a long time, but anyway, I'm, I'm rambling here. I don't care much for the collection aspect, I much prefer to just be able to conveniently get stuff right away and not have to, because we don't own a car, not have to like take a bus into the city or, you know, hang out at a midnight launch. I can download the game and then, you know, go to sleep and wake up and play it early in the morning if I want to. There's no pressure there. Feels good, man. So, uh, I'll tell you what. I am hoping to get a, a deal with the devil room here, but I'm going to go to our library. I want to explain why first, just in case it makes me look like a genius. We took the rosary. I want to get the Bible out of the rotation. This could be a way to do it without wasting maybe a, a pedestal later. Well, okay. What we will do is take Book of Shadows into our uh, arcade and possibly snag the blood bag as a result. So it's not the end of the world, but it, it clearly didn't work out exactly as I intended. I think we walked into that at just the right time. I hope I wasn't mistaken in that. Usually you get like six plays out of it. Yep. And that's just going to give us money, but hey. Money equals power could show up. I would definitely trade 2 HP for that. But for now, it's down to the next floor. And I guess, like, uh, the other thing is, if you're a PC gamer, do you really care about collecting anymore? Like, hasn't that been, like... And I, I play everything possible for the most part on PC. Sometimes I buy things for the new consoles just to have an excuse to sit on my couch and play them. I know you can do Steam streaming to your TV. I did it for a while. Oh, we did get our deal with the devil here. Yeah, I'll take the ability to fly. No brother Bobby, though. Even though it is relatively cheap. But anyway, um, I did it for a while. I tried to play, like, a game where latency wouldn't matter that much, so I played The Wolf Among Us. And then it was just, like, there's just a little bit too much lag time, even though our home network is pretty good. Uh, yes, we are down to the next floor now. So, yeah, I, I know that that exists, but occasionally, you know, you know, I'm... It's, again, that, like, Book of Revelations kind of rationalization, right? I bought the consoles, so I gotta find a use for them. And I, I've been able to do so with the PS4. Not trying to fire shots at Xbox One. I just, I need some kind of, you know, I need Sunset Overdrive to be really good. So I have a, an excuse to play it. Or, you know, I was, I was thinking that it would be the, the Master Chief Collection, the, the Halo re-releases. Because, as you might be able to tell, I played a lot of Halo when I was younger. Um, and I would be totally up for a nostalgia trip if that game is any good. But, it comes out like the week after Rebirth. Which... Maybe? Maybe that's not gonna be a problem, but... Realistically, I'm probably gonna not be as interested to spend time with Halo, because I'll be, you know, balls deep in Rebirth. Pardon my French there. 
But yeah, as PC gamers, like, when was the last time you bought a game that came in a box? When was, beyond that, let's take it a step further, when was that the last time you regularly bought games that came in, like, packaged products? Like, when I go to, uh, electronic stores now, and I do this occasionally to look for, like, bad game show games to play for the NLSS, here's what I see if I go to, like, a Best Buy or, uh, a Future Shop, which is, well, I mean, we have Best Buy in Canada, but Future Shop's kind of like a Canadian Best Buy, for lack of a better word, even though that sounds confusing. Here's where their PC gaming section is. Uh, about a hundred uh, games made by EA, most of them Sims-related. Some SimCity, but a lot of, like, Sims 3 and Sims 3 DLC, Sims 4, etc., etc. Um, see a lot of games based on slot machines, like a lot of Big Fish games that have, uh, for whatever reason... They now have a physical release because that's how people who are into playing digital slots buy their games, is they go to Best Buy and look for the best slot-related game there. Or, uh, well, occasionally, again, other EA stuff, apart from The Sims, you'd see, like, uh, like Dragon Age or something like that. Um, or stuff that's really old that, for some reason, has not sold out. Like, uh... You know, they'll have, like, a, a copy of Skyrim. Not that Skyrim's really old, but you're like, really? No, like, yeah, we just had this for, like, the last four years. Three years, I guess, at this point. But no Family Feud uh, Battle of the Sexes, no matter how hard I've tried. So we're not taking that cube of meat. What did I tell you? Now, I'm not going to take this version of uh, Nine Lives, because I think it puts us in a position where we would actually lose our spirit hearts because we'd die in the process of getting it. Uh, but certainly... Brimstone, followed by Lump of Coal, plus two damage, followed by pretty much max money, money equals power, plus four damage. It gives us Brimstone plus six damage, which is kind of absurd. It puts us in a very good position, not to mention Book of Revelations. We got all these spirit arts working out in our favor. This run is pretty much sorted out, and I'm uh, extremely happy as a result of that. And one-shotting everything is a, it's a good place to be. And of course, the other reason that I'm happy to have a second level uh, Meat Boy only is because it actually does provide us with some orbital protection, which we wouldn't otherwise have. Yeah... I'm playing Judgment mostly because I'm, I'm not worried about our damage. Our damage is acceptable, so even if we lose, like, 0.8 by giving him 20 cents, we'll be fine. And uh, he can give us stuff like the Devil card, which is useful, but mostly I'm hoping he gives me the Compass, which is a fairly common Judgment payout. I'll get rid of this. Uh, fairly common judgment payout. Not the most common, but very common. And again, we should be able to get our money back regardless. And even if we don't, we're not losing an appreciable amount of damage at this point, I'd say. But it would be nice if he paid out a little faster than he is right now. Because this is getting kind of absurd. But the most important thing is just that he pays out with something good. And it's nice that he's giving us consumables along the way, but come on, man. Take in, uh, 17, that's 18 cents. 18 cents for HP. I think it's okay. It's a trade that, knowing what I know now, I probably would not take. But, again, we're gonna, we're getting this HP, and then momentarily we'll probably, or over the course of the next floor or so, we'll probably be able to get our uh, money back anyway. Probably. That helps. Um, we are gonna check this corner over here, just in case. And uh, the other thing is, if it's a relatively easy room, why not go through it, you know? There's probably an argument to be made that a mob trap room with bosses is not necessarily an easy room, but we got some money out of it, so I don't feel too bad. And really, who are we going to be fighting against? Yeah, this is what I was thinking. Loki's going to go down in like five hits, less if he actually spawns a bomb fly that we can exploit. Any second now? No? Okay. Well, it's easier for me, I guess. And then we got Chubb. Chubb is like, you know, we can two-shot him. Very easily. But I'm playing up drama that doesn't exist right now, because this run is is pretty much sorted. We have our secret room over there as well. Yeah, this run's pretty much sorted as long as we don't have some kind of cataclysmic failure. And it is a little bit of a triumph, if I may toot my own horn a little bit. It's a little bit of a triumph that we managed to save so many spirit hearts while keeping Book of Revelations, you know, from having 9-volt nuns habit, etc, etc. Without getting those items, to, to have spirit hearts survive for so long is a bit of a, uh, a surprise. A small coup, one could maybe say. This might be great to help us get our money back. No steam sale. Alrighty. Steam sale. 
That's okay. Steam sale, woohoo! Showing up in needless places. Steam sale, woohoo! There's there's other things that rhyme with places, but um, I I can't think of them at the moment. So we're gonna have to just uh, put that one on ice for now. Now, mom's heart should go down relatively quickly. I am expecting that Isaac is pretty much gonna offer the harshest uh, competition that we're gonna have for the rest of the run, unless we get absolute dog crap from the uh, the chest, which is conceivable and actually happens fairly frequently. Uh, I'm gonna try downwards first, just in case. You never know. The most important thing is not that our damage be maxed out. The most important thing is that our damage is good enough that we can one-shot these, uh, you know, vaginal bomb flies. Because by being able to one-shot these guys, puts us in a much better position to not explode when we attack them. As long as we're cautious about, you know, where we do our attacks. Really thought we'd be one-shotting you. It would be nice to get more damage. I know it's, it's greed, but at the same time, it would be great. Alright, so here comes Isaac. I'm going to save the Devil card, even though I thought that Isaac, or I think that Isaac, to be more accurate, will be the most difficult competition that we have. I think if you're, if you're not at immediate risk, why not save your good card for a little bit later? You know, it just gives you a little bit of peace of mind. I understand about indecision, and I don't care if, I left, if I'm left behind. See, this is why I was kicked out of Boston. People living in competition, all I want is to have that peace of mind. I have that peace of mind right now. Because we've got this devil card for the future, and, you know, devil card may be Dracula backwards, but... It's also something that gives us, you know... It, effectively, it's HP. Everything in Isaac comes down to HP, you know? You know how plastic, fossil fuels, you know, so many things are just dead dinosaurs converted into other things? De dead organic material. That's how I feel about items in Isaac. You know, all items, all consumables are... First off, that's bullshit that we got 20 bombs here. But anyway, um, it's just, uh... It's just health converted into another form. The devil saves us like five health. That's my philosophy on it. So we got Abel and 20 bombs, and, uh... Spider Butt is bad. It's a bad item. Yumhard is not very good for us either. Uh, but we'll end up taking Spider Butt into the boss fight unless we get a better spacebar item or the D6. Which we're very unlikely to get the D6. A better spacebar item, I would say, is probably like a 50 50 shot. Um, but I won't be too salty about taking the the Spider Butt into the. into the uh, Blue Baby fight. Because at least it does something. I mean, it's better. Th Pardon me, it's better than taking Book of Revelations into the Blue Baby fight. But we're not going to need either of them, so, you know, let's not get too bent out of shape about min-maxing and stuff like that when we're, uh, absolutely 100% totally fucking fine. You hear that? GameStop salesman, 100% totally fine. Hey, here's, just to go back to that rant, uh, when I was doing Poison Mushroom, I went to the... Oh, this, this is potentially sweet. No, it's not. Well, you know what? Three spirit hearts to get uh, max money equals power damage? Sure. It's probably not worth it, but it's kind of funny. Um, when I was doing Poison Mushroom, I bought a bunch of shitty console games. Not that they were shitty because they were on console. Like, even on PC, Deadliest Catch Alaskan Storm would probably not be a Game of the Year candidate. But when I bought them, the dude was like, uh, Hey, you know, if you don't like these, you can't take these back. Like, we, we won't take a full refund or store credit for these. Real, reasonable thing to say when someone is buying a handful of games that includes, like, you know, Saw 2, A Puzzle of Flesh and Blood. Well, we certainly didn't need to give up three spirit arts there anymore. Um, and, and Deadliest Catch, for example. Uh, but, in the same, uh, like, week, because it was the week that I came back from teaching in South Korea, I was like, you know what, I could get down with a new FIFA game to play casually. I know, I'm a scumbag, I, I play sports games occasionally, I'm a sports fan, to, at least on a casual level, so uh, I like playing FIFA. FIFA's, you know, one of the finest of the flavors when it comes to those sports games. But anyway, uh, I bought last year's version of FIFA, and little did I know, you know, it was like $10 cheaper than this year's version, so I was like, ah, the games don't change that much year to year. Um, why not just get last year's version? Well, this is at the time when EA was doing its online pass stuff, so to prevent, like, used game sales from cannibalizing all their profits, they, uh, 
made it so that every game had, uh, when you bought it new, there was a code inside, and when you activated it, that allowed you to play online. But if you tried to use it a second time, i.e. if you sold the game to EB, and then, uh, you know, some poor sucker bought it, you had to pay $15 to actually use the, to play the game online, because they didn't get your money, like, the first time. So instead of paying, you know, 60 bucks for the new version of the game, I ended up paying 65 for the old version, and where was, uh, Mr. EB at the counter saying, hey, you know you're gonna have to buy an online pass for this, if you want to play online. He didn't say shit, he said, hey, do you want to get that $3 guarantee for your used game? That's the kind of shit that, that riles me up a little bit, I mean, you know, I don't expect, uh, all companies to, to be watchdogs for consumers and, you know, make your decisions for you. But that's something that I feel like people maybe should be, should have been. I'm not sure if it's still common practice for EA. I think they got rid of it, but something that people should have been made aware of. But of course they weren't, because if there's one thing that I'm cynical about, it's, I guess it's GameStop and EB. Weird. All right, well, we can at least put Wheel of Fortune down and explode it here. Uh, shoot the whoop. I would say that's worse than uh, spider butt maybe yeah it's it's worse than spider butt for the, for our purposes i'm not sure if i'd gotten them both at the like exact start of the game i'm not totally sure which one i would have gone with but anyway two devil cards uh, i'm probably as much as i could like use one and then go back i'm probably not going to backtrack because this runs already a foregone conclusion it's sorted we're going to win did i just not hit famine on that first one that was weird the health bar didn't budge at all Maybe it only pulls from, like, Pestilence. Or maybe Pestilence just has, like, 20 times the HP of, uh, Famine? I don't know. Doesn't really matter. I hate... Why does the foot take so much less damage than the face? I mean, I guess if you kick someone in the shins, it does a little bit less damage than if you kick them in the brain, but still. It's annoying. No feet. No feet action. Thank you. And our last room is going to be goity. We got so many bombs that I feel like it would be a waste if we didn't use them for something. We'll try to use them against Blue Baby as well, but... If I had taken damage there, I would not be proud of it. So I guess we go back and get Spider, but... Well, we were going to backtrack anyway, so shows what I know. This has been a fun run. I do think that if, you know, we have a Gwyneth Paltrow sliding doors moment, if we hadn't taken Brimstone, we probably would not survive long enough to get the items like money equals power and... Uh, you know, the free mark and stuff like that. All those tiers upgrades. So I do think that Brimstone was, was disproportionately integral to our success here, but not in its traditional way. But also the extra damage bonuses that we got from, you know, the items that we ended up getting was pretty flippin' sweet. So, Devil Card, Spider Butt. You know, that's the effectiveness of Spider Butt right there. I still stand by the fact that I think it was probably better than uh, Shoop the Whoop. And I don't think that Shoop the Whoop necessarily needs a rebalancing, but I will say, I think Shoop the Whoop is bad. And then you can pass your own judgment from there. It's unremarkable. Maybe that's the most damning thing that you could say about an item in Isaac, is that it's not necessarily just bad, it's just, uh, who cares if it's in there? It just exists. And we can see our spirit hearts in a way it's kind of freeing, Thank you, Meat Boy. Finish the job here. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that run and the uh, tangents contained within. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.